Hello everyone, my brain is full of Jane Austen and I can't wait to talk to you about it today. Welcome, if you are new to the Bookshelf Odyssey uh, YouTube channel. I do a podcast as well as YouTube channel and this month we're talking all things Jane Austen. Uh, I got a lot to catch, up, catch you up on, uh, but specifically today I want to talk about an article I just read and the new uh, Persuasion movie that came out on uh, Netflix. It seems like everybody who ha even has a YouTube channel has been talking about this film. And of course, I am no exception to that. I saw it for the first time this weekend. And as easy as it would be to just sit here and trash the film, because uh, I, I think it is a bad adaptation. But I think there is some value to it. And I and I like to try to look at things more positively. You know, and I've heard from some a few people that have said they really liked this and the changes that were, were made. And as somebody pointed out to me as well, if it causes somebody to go and read Persuasion and enjoy that book, then, you know, that's great. But it is something of a dumpster fire if, if you want my hot take on it. But let me uh, let me start off talking to you first of all about the uh, this article I read by a man named Ted Shaman. I probably mispronounced that last name, so I apologize. This was an article on uh, GQ, and I don't read GQ. Sorry, I know you probably think I do, but um, no, I don't. Someone brought up this article on a Voxer channel I follow, and it, the, the article is called "The Joys of Being an Austin Bro." And it's all about his experiences being a fan of Jane Austen, as he calls himself a super fan, in a world that basically says men should not like Jane Austen. Now, if you watched my Jane Austen videos before, you know I've had a little bit to say about that, that I, I think Jane Austen is a wonderful writer for any gender to read uh, because of the social commentary, because of the character she creates, because of the world that she builds, she is a masterful writer. And to say, to dismiss her as being merely for women uh, is disgraceful to her uh, and, and to women, to be honest. Uh, anyway, this article had some great things to say about that. And I'll link it in the show notes so you can read it yourself. But I, I found it to be a breath of fresh air, uh, especially coming from a man uh, again, in a culture, as he calls our, our world, the, the dude's first culture that we still live in today. He said some really wonderful things about what Jane Austen has meant to him. And in that, he brings up the movie in the, in the book Persuasion. It says, in Persuasion, Anne Elliot, though changed from the raptures of her youth, finds recom recompense in the more complicated but richer joys of a mature relationship. Like Anne, and with apologies to Wordsworth, I have learned to look on the world not as in the hour of youth, but hearing and even accepting the melancholy music of humanity. During some of the darkest months I hope to experience, Austin's novels saw me through, not with escapism, but with their ever-arresting sense in grace. That was just beautifully written, and it's so true. And then he, he goes on to say that, uh, as he concludes his article, he says, one can partake of, of Jane Austen, whether one is a Scotch baronet of the 1810s, an elderly Londoner of the 1920s, or a millennial or Zoomer who discovers that this retiring country novelist from two centuries ago offers such acute and such endearingly relevant observations on life in what remains a dude's first culture. Uh, you know, and th so there's a lot that he said in his article that I agree with that, you know, our culture still seems to be male dominated and i think his point here is that we need to listen to this woman who is writing from a male dominated culture to in some ways is still relevant to our culture today uh and because some things have changed for the better yes but there are still there's still a long way to go to see real change so that brings me to this persuasion adaptation uh, done by Netflix. And there's a lot of it that I did not like, uh, especially if I'm looking at the film as an adaptation, uh, which is unfortunate because I thought the trailer looked really good. And I don't even mind the addressing the camera angle of, of the story uh, of the movie. You know how um, Anne will address the camera like uh, the, the show Fleabag does in 
many have compared this movie to Fleabag and uh, to other films like Bridgerton in trying to be hip and cool and relevant. And it just comes off feeling very awkward and, and strange. And it is strange. I don't even know where to begin on my review of this. Uh, but if again, if you love this movie, you know, I, that's great. I don't, I don't want you to think that I am coming after you or think that you have, uh, you're less of a person for liking this film, even though you might feel like less of a person for having watched it. Okay. But here's what worked for me. I'll, I'll start with the positive. I, I laughed through a lot of this movie. I, I watched it Sunday afternoon and it gave me a delightful Sunday afternoon film to watch. Some of the reasons I laughed was because it was legitimately funny. Anne's father, I, I enjoyed his, the actor, uh, Richard E. Grant. He was, I just thought, perfectly cast in that role. And then Anne's sister, uh, Mary, I believe her name is. Uh, just, again, perfection, hilarious, completely silly, over the top. The scenery was breathtakingly gorgeous. And I loved the costumes, the music, you know, all of the elements were there, but something about it just didn't work for me. If I'm looking at the movie as an adaptation, uh, if I look at it on its own as a film independent uh, of Jane Austen, then yeah, it was, it was a fun, a fun movie. I, you know, I should say that Persuasion is probably my second or third favorite Jane Austen, and I don't mind changes. One of my favorite movies trilogies is uh, the Lord of the Rings, and they make some changes to the, some of the characters and plot elements from the from the novel, and that's fine. I don't mind that. I actually like the movies better than the book. I know that's heresy. Well, this 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 whole video is just going to be shocking statements after another. Okay, so all, all that to say, I can handle adaptations and I can handle handle changes. I'm not that much of a purist. In fact, I find the changes to be interesting as to what they're trying to say. I'm just not sure that this was a good adaptation of Jane Austen's persuasion. Uh, one of the things they do is they change Anne's character so much from that, from what the article said about her ability to gracefully handle the, the darkness of humanity and, and the heartache to uh, where, where into this film, she, she's, she's practically an alcoholic um, that may be a bit of an exaggeration, but you know, she's kind of being portrayed as this hot mess. She feels to me more like a modern version of Elizabeth Bennett than, uh, than Anne. Some of the, the ways that Anne talks to the camera, she basically gives away the jokes before they happen. And then talks to you again after the joke happened to see if you caught the joke. And so I was finding that a little bit repetitive, but her character is so vastly different than the character of Anne in the book. It's not even the same character. And that's kind of where I have the problem with modernizing this novel. She in the novel was very, a, a very quiet and internal, internally thinking kind of character. In this movie, they make her more sarcastic and brash, which I don't think she's described at all in that way in the novel. Uh, uh, so, so different from how she is in the, in the book that the rest of the story, I think, struggles to fit that dynamic because the story isn't written for Elizabeth Bennett. It was, it was written for, for Anne. And then when you change that main character so much, the rest of the film has to change to keep up with it. I, I mean, that's my opinion. And there were some things that, you know, I just don't need to see in a Jane Austen novel. And I admit, maybe I'm a bit of a prude, but, uh, there were, you know, there were, uh, there was some sex jokes and innuendos. There was a fart joke, which was funny, but again, just really seemed out of place in, in Jane Austen. Uh, you know, there was a scene where Anne like is in the forest and she just basically squats to go to the bathroom and, uh, and then overhears this conversation I get the humor that's behind there. And like I said, on its own, that could be funny. But to say this is a Jane Austen story, you know, I don't think that works because that's probably nothing that she would have written herself. And I, I get they're trying to make this feel modern and, and appeal to a modern audience. But I so I compare this to the, the Emma movie that came out in 2020 that I think took that same approach to try to sound and be a little more contemporary and modern in its approach. And I think Emma completely succeeded at that. You know, you watch it and you feel 
like this is a Jane Austen movie, even though you see Mr. Knightley's rear end in the first, you know, minute of the movie for some reason, uh, you know, hey, <laughs> got a good looking actor as as that guy. You, you might as well show it off. Right. <laughs> but all that to say that I, I feel like that movie succeeded, whereas this one did not. And it probably comes down to the script. Uh, just some of the dialogue was just downright strange. Like when they were visiting that uh, the one lady and the, there's this really painfully awkward pause in the conversation where everyone was just staring around at each other. And then Anne just starts talking about this bizarre dream she's had of an octopus sucking on her face. And I'm like, what? What is happening here? And I died laughing through the whole thing because it was so bizarre. Uh, and I found it to be hilarious. But again, not what I think Jane Austen was going at in both the tone and the character of the book. You know, I could see that maybe being in something like in Emma, maybe uh, Harriet Smith telling that story, you know, trying to fit into the upper class that uh, Emma wants her to be a part of. And then she blurts out some kind of uncomfortable story like that. I, I could see that more in in a character like that. But to have Anne blurt that kind of story out, it's it's again, I get from what I'm told, uh, it's very similar to the character in Fleabag where she just blurts things out that are weird. Uh, I, I haven't watched the show, so I can't say for sure. One of the things I loved about this film was its diverse casting. Uh, Henry Golding was brilliant in his role. And uh, Mary's husband, and I'm sorry, I forget his name. He was great. Since I'm just rambling all over the place about this, one of the scenes I loved the most was uh, when Wentworth and Anne were on the beach. And it, it's the uh, Let's Be Friends speech. And again, for an adaptation... I don't know if that worked. It, it just felt too modern, but on its own, I thought it was a very beautifully shot scene. It just feels like it's a contemporary discussion. Like if this were a modern movie, and in fact, um, Anne's clothes appear to be so modern for a while, I forgot that this was actually set in, you know, 1805 or whatever. Anyway, this movie, it, it feels like they tried to stay, uh, you know, stay true to the original story and let's get really modern. And then they just kind of squished it together and took bits from both. It was like if somebody took, you know, an old film of Emma and took Clueless and then tried to mash it together into one thing. And what is created is some kind of a monster, <laughs> you know, all in all, I'm not sad. I watched it. Is this a good movie or not? I mean, all art is subjective and some people are going to like it and some are going to hate it. Uh, I will probably not watch this version again. You know, I, it wasn't, what I look for in a Jane Austen film. And that's all right. I guess I come to the conclusion that um, this movie is just not for me. I'm not the intended audience for it. Uh, let me know your thoughts. And as always, please be kind to those who might disagree with you. I, I don't want to get out my mean face here. Okay. All that to say, you know, I, I laughed. And at the end of the day, it provided me with a couple hours of, of entertainment. But when you're, when you're as a genius as a writer, as Jane Austen is, you know, stick with what works. And all that to say, I feel like we've got some good adaptations of, of Persuasion and, in fact, of many of her novels. So maybe we don't need to film a new Jane Austen movie every year. I don't know. Am I, am I kicked out of the Jane Austen fan club now for saying that? Uh, you know, there are some great stories that she wrote that could be adapted uh, and to be adapted better. Uh, there are some great stories from that time period that haven't yet been adapted but could. I just think Persuasion is a very difficult book to adapt. Um, anyway, those are my really rambly thoughts on Persuasion. Maybe, you know, I'm just kind of wishy-washy on it in the middle somewhere. You know, if you like it, great. It's just not for me. I, I think there are some good things in it. If you look at it, not as an adaptation, but as a movie. All right, enough about that. So a couple other things I want to just touch base with real quick. I read Jane and I by Susanna Fullerton, and it's a it's a nice little memoir about her love of Jane Austen, how she came to read Jane Austen, how uh, what she means to her, and it just gives a short history of of her love of reading Jane Austen. And I, I like that kind of memoir. I love books that are about books, so it's one of my favorite genres. She just talks about you know how she got to read her and her adventures and finding Jane Austen societies to join and different things like that. One of the things I really appreciated about this book is she has a chapter that she gives 
recommendations for uh, 10 biographies as well as 10 books of literary criticism about Jane Austen. And I was very, and, and that was really interested to read those. So I've added those books to my uh, TBR list that is wildly out of control and I uh, hope to read them over the next few years. Uh, I, I'm really wanting to dig a little deeper into Jane Austen and, and uh, learn more about her. Uh, so uh, that's some of my reading plans for the distant future. But uh, so this book has some great book recommendations in it as well. So I, I would highly recommend if you love Jane Austen, you will find a mutual friend in Susanna Fullerton. And then another one I read, uh, and that was Francis Burney's uh, Evelina. And uh, this says about it. The story follows young Evelina as she leaves the seclusion of her country home and enters into late 18th century London society both its pleasures and its dangers. Life in 18th century England is vividly rendered as Evelina is educated in the world, in the ways of the world and, eventually, love, as she battles such cruelties as social snobbery and delights in such thrills as pleasure gardens and balls. Evelina strives toward the, her final triumph while capturing the hearts of readers everywhere along the way. Just briefly about the book. I really loved it. Um, I want to read more by her. It, it really felt like Jane Austen, very similar writing style. I think in her, the main character Evelina was, was charming and witty and you know, you're rooting for her through the whole, through her whole journey. I did have a little bit of trouble keeping straight some of the characters. This book is a bit longer than your typical Jane Austen novel is. And it just reminds me of how well Austen does characters and that I I've usually do not have trouble keeping straight um, Austin characters straight. They're so iconic. So that uh, wraps up my uh, last week or so of reading. And I've got a few more things I'm reading right now. I'm, I'm doing the uh, Lady Susan read along. And uh, this is a reread for it. I really struggled with it the first time. And I got to be honest, I'm struggling with it again this time. But I'm going to uh, persevere through it and see if I can get it to make more sense to me this time around. All right, let me know what you've been reading this week and for this month. I'd love to hear what you what your thoughts are on uh, the new Persuasion movie. Do you have a favorite version? And uh, let me know and why. And we'll keep the discussion going in the comments below. So until next time, happy reading and take care.